to start early? You want to give the two minutes to start exactly at four? What would you like uh, to do? You said they should give the two minutes. Four fifty-eight. Standing by. Because there's people who are standing by. Okay. Okay. Uh, we'll be looking. Fifty-nine, standing by for one minute. If your phone is on, can you please take this time to just shut it to the vibrating option so we don't interrupt the lecture during the course of broadcast? Thank you guys so much. Count down from 10. I'm going to stop at 2 and you can take it on your zero, please. All right. We're going to go live with the broadcast at 10, 9, 8, 7. That's why you're on that. That's it. All right, let's finish that count. Start again. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Four, three. Hotep, Hotep, Hotep. 5535 Germantown Avenue, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, the Malefe Kete Asante Institute. We welcome you. You know, my mom used to say, um, mind your business and keep your hands to yourself. <laughs> she also used to say, but if anybody puts their hands on you, so we weren't looking for a fight. But I'd like to introduce, in this corner, Malefe Kete Asante, professor of the Department of Africology and African American Studies at Temple University in Philadelphia, the founder of the doctoral program at Temple University, the first in the world to offer a doctoral degree in African American Studies. You should clap it up for that right there. We got a history maker. He is the president of the Malefe Kete Asante Institute for Afrocentric Studies. He is the professor extraordinarius at the University of South Africa, the founding editor of the Journal of Black Studies, and the first director of UCLA Center for Afro-American Studies. He has published over 100 books, 500 articles. I should say 500 KOs, right, to, to fit the... <laughs> and stepping into the ring right now, is the already victorious yep. through his consciousness, yes. Dr. Malefe Kete Asante. Show your love, put your hands together. <laughs> ding, 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 let's have a clean fight. Wow, I mean, I'm already victorious, as he said, right? Isn't that wonderful? Wow, I tell you, the brother can introduce, <laughs> and the brother can speak, too. And I am, I'm just delighted, I'm happy to be here, and I am, uh, I'm always ready for a good fight. So it's, uh, particularly when it's about our people, and when you are trying to uh, give the truth where falsehood has been given. And uh, that's what we wanna do today. <clears throat> I, 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 I heard some very uh, disturbing news from a friend of mine earlier this afternoon who told me that DeSantis was in Philadelphia uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And I said, Governor DeSantis was here? And I didn't hear anything about it. But he said, well, of course, you wouldn't hear about it if it, uh, the Union League, which the Union League was started, and this is about history now, was started during uh, the Civil War <clears throat> as a, uh, a league to support the Union against the Confederacy. But over the years, it has changed its colors. The Union League is now uh, uh, predominantly Republican and predominantly conservative. So it's very, very strange that a Union League in a Philadelphia, uh, which is the center of uh, the Afrocentric movement 
And the heart of the black struggle for freedom, in many ways, uh, would invite DeSantis. But it's not too strange, because after all, uh, it's the same struggle. And we have had this struggle uh, for more than 150 years. We've had this struggle uh, since uh, the end of the Civil War. Uh, we have fought this struggle, and we are always willing to engage anybody who comes up and who tries to attack us on our history. So uh, the title, for those of you who are listening uh, in the stream, uh, the title we call why is DeSantis scared of black studies? And for those of you who are in foreign nations, uh, you may not know who DeSantis is. Uh, Ron, uh, Ronald DeSantis is actually the governor of the state of Florida. <clears throat> now, the state of Florida uh, has a history of electing uh, conservative people. And he is one of the most conservative uh, people that they have elected over the last few years. Uh, we will talk about uh, what this governor did and what he's doing. And of course, he's preparing himself to run for the presidency of the United States of America. Uh, we believe he has very little chance, uh, particularly given uh, the structure of the American society itself and with a growing population of, uh, of African people and uh, Latino uh, uh, people uh, in this country. So we're going we're gonna to try to deconstruct uh, what has gone on with Governor DeSantis. Governor DeSantis uh, forced the college board. I don't know whether you ever heard of the college, most people never had never heard of the college board, but the college board <laughs> is an organization that um, is a not-for-profit organization. It's led by 17 people. 17 people run it. 17 people, 17 leaders of it. Uh, they have one black person. His name is Greg Walker, in the leadership of the college board, and the college board was founded in 1900. And the idea was that it uh, would also create advanced uh, placement courses. So if you're in high school yes, and you take their course, when you get to college, you have college credit. That's what the advanced placement course is. Mm -hmm. So they go around giving advanced placement courses in mathematics. You can get an advanced placement course in biology, et cetera, et cetera. So they decided that it would be good to bring together African Americans to help them create a high school course that would be an advanced placement course. And this advanced placement course uh, would allow high school students to get college credit. So that seems quite a reasonable thing to do. They've done this before. Uh, and let them do this. Uh, they hired as a consultant uh, Henry Louis Gates, and they asked him to be the consultant for this project that was being developed. So the various uh, 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 people in black studies throughout the nation, uh, uh, scores of them met, and they came up with an idea about what this course African-American history placement course, advanced placement course, should look like. Well, um, when I saw it, I, I, I had problems with it, but uh, I, I, I would have given it a pass. Uh, but uh, it, there, there, there were some problems, but they're not the same problems that DeSantis had with it. So we, I will, I'll try to parse that for you so you can see what the differences uh, were. But at any rate, uh, when they launched this course, the first thing DeSantis did was to say that, oh, wait a minute, there's a, there's a, there's a problem here with this course. And uh, this course uh, really is a course that really needs to be restructured because there's some things in it I don't like. There's some people in it I don't like. 
And, and just to give you an alert, I'm one of the people that was banned by this course, all right? So that's why I'm, I'm eager to talk about it, and I'm even, even eager to talk about what the college board did in response to DeSantis, because that's important as well. Uh, because you, even though you have the best of intentions, as I think the people did uh, who were trying to create this course, what happened was it backfired in many ways. Let me tell you a, a lesson here. This is, I call it lesson two. Africa is the original home of all humanity. Amen. And that's for DeSantis to know because he doesn't know that. He doesn't have any idea about that. And let me tell you this, because we're going to have to get into this too. Andrew Jackson, the so-called Indian fighter, that was a, what the name they gave him, the Indian fighter, carried out genocide against the Seminole and Muscogee people in Florida. That's how Florida was settled by the whites. They went into Florida with Andrew Jackson's army, and they decided that every white person who killed a Native American would get 161 acres of land. That's how it was settled. That's the truth. That's, black, that's history. Okay, so I'm going to give you the historical facts so, so you will have the weapons that you need to deal with this situation. And I want to just give you some facts, too. Uh, there was a battle uh, called the Battle of uh, uh, Wounded Knee in 1896, uh, which showed white Americans' brutality against the indigenous uh, people. In fact, they, they, the, the Battle of Wounded Knee is one of the worst uh, 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 brutalities and massacres of people. People, innocent people with no weapons, uh, were just gunned down. Uh, this was 1896. This is American history. But remember the date, 1896. Remember this. This is five years after some other event that happened that I will tell you about. Numerous massacres in Wilmington, uh, in Memphis, in Elaine, Arkansas. In Elaine, Arkansas, 700 black people were killed. In Rosewood, Florida, where they destroyed the entire town of black people, burned the whole town to the ground. Uh, demonstrate the history you are not to know. This is what they don't want you to know. Don't te you can't teach African American history because if you teach African American history, white kids will feel ashamed. White children will feel guilty. You can't teach African American history. This is what they have said since the days that they enslaved us, you see? The whole notion of slavery was built around the idea that black people were so inferior to white people. It was that whole notion of the doctrine of white supremacy. And that's the same notion that DeSantis is peddling today. Now, lesson three for us. All black history must be taught. And in fact, not only must be taught, we will teach it. DeSantis can't stop us from teaching it. And in fact, the college board can't stop us from teaching it. And I want the college board to know this because I've been getting letters from a few of them. I want them to know that you can't stop us from teaching the correct version of African-American history. That is the case. That's the basis of Afrocentricity. We have our own agency. We don't need you to tell us our history. It's like you telling me my mama and my daddy. You don't, I don't need you to do that. I know my own people. We know our own history. We know our own narratives. And we are able to teach our history and will teach our history regardless to what DeSantis or the college board does. Uh, 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 what it does, what, he, what, he, uh, what DeSantis does, or what the college board does. Now, let, let me tell you something. Why would I leave out James Baldwin? And I'm going to talk about this, because this is important, because they, they want to leave out Audre Lorde. They want to leave out Bayard Rustin, because they say, you know, they were gay. They were LBGTQ. Well, why would I leave them out? Our history is replete with all kinds of people. 
The, James Baldwin is one of the most brilliant people to ever to live in America. And his writings and his work were significant for us during the Civil Rights Movement. Bayard Rustin organized the 1963 March on Washington. What are you talking about? This is, you know, what fascism is. You may not have heard this word, but the word fascism, it really is a way of organizing a society in which a government controls the lives of the people and tell people what they are allowed to accept and what they're allowed not to accept. That's a fascist government. It tells you, you can do this, but you can't do that. You, can, you, 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 you can't teach African history or African-American history. Uh, and and you, you put that into practice. And you, 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 you condemn people, punish people, uh, if people taught African-American history. That's, that's, you can't do that. We have always fought Hitlers and Mussolinis. The Battle of Adwa in 1896 was one of the great battles in which the Ethiopians defeated the Italian army. This is when the great Menelik, the great Menelik leader of Ethiopia, met the Italians and defeated them. The reason I mention the Italians is because Italians, Irish, and Jews in America have always tended toward how to become white. There are books written about this. How Irish became white, how Jews became white, how Italians became white. Because originally they were not considered by the wasp as whites. You know what I'm saying? This is because the society is hierarchical. And a hierarchical society where you have uh, the white uh, Anglo-Saxon Protestants at the top of the ladder, what they do, everybody else is below them. And so the other people have to struggle and figure out how they're going to get up on that ladder. And part of getting up on that ladder is to be anti-black. If you come here from Turkey, if you come here from Italy, and you are anti-black, you side with the notion of white racial supremacy. You no longer say you're Turkish. You no longer say you're Italian. You say, I'm Ronald DeSantis, I'm governor of Florida. But he came here as an Italian. And you know when he came here? His family came here in 1907. 1907. Look at that. My family in Georgia has been here at least seven generations. He came here in 1907. I know this place. We worked in this country for 246 years for free. We built it. We farmed it. We laid the railroads in the east, and the Chinese laid the railroads in the west. We, we know this place. We didn't come here in 1907. No. We have understood the very nature of the attempt to punish black people for having knowledge, and particularly the knowledge of yourself, because we have always said, and my teachers taught me when I was a little child in Georgia, if you only understood who you were, they couldn't stop you. And that's what I say to young black children today. Do you know who you are? Do you know your history? Do you know where you come from? In this document called the Advanced Placement Course, they created dozens of units. And DeSantis and his team objected to three of them. Out of, in fact, 102 units were created. They objected to just three of them. They said, these, these three, uh, object, uh, uh, units cannot be there. And then they ban a lot of people. After the college board uh, uh, looked at what DeSantis did, they went and rewrote the thing, and then they said, okay, we're going to take out Todd Nehisi Coates. We're going to take out Robin D.G. Uh, Kelly. 
We're going to take out Angela Davis. We're going to take out Audre Lorde. We're going to take out Malefi Asante. We're going to take out Alice Walker. We're going to take out uh, Tony Cade Bambara. We're going to take out Nikki Giovanni. We're going to take out James Baldwin, Bell Hooks, Kimberly Crenshaw, Leslie K. Jones, Mari Evans, et cetera, et cetera. And there were several others. that they just say, We're taking them out of the curriculum. How the hell can you do that? I mean, be, be quite, come on. This is our history. These are the people who have made our history. They have written our history. What, what are you talking about? How, how is it that uh, somebody who's written 100 books and, and, and has 140 PhD uh, students who, who've got their degrees with him, how are you going to take him out of African-American history class? How are you going to take somebody who created the theory of Afrocentricity, which is the most dominant theory in the continent of Africa now in terms of academic analysis and is a growing theory in this country? Why, why, why would you do that? What, 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 is, your, what is your objective when you, when you decide that you need to do that? Well, Manny Diaz, who is a Florida commissioner of education, he um, uh, was... Uh, uh, one of the people that uh, did the bidding of Ronald DeSantis. Now, DeSantis wants to be governor, and Manny Diaz acts like he wants to be, uh, 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 Ronald DeSantis wants to be president, and Manny Diaz is acting like he wants to be governor. In other words, are you gonna, we gonna, you're going to step up, and I'm going to step up, you see? But Manny Diaz uh, says that the course that, that was created is masquerading as education. And, and that is nothing more than woke indoctrination that would violate the state laws uh, of Texas, how race can be taught in the classroom. Because the only way they want race taught in the classroom is white supremacy. That's what they want. And so they said, and, and uh, the idea that the African American history class was masquerading as education, well, in fact, the whole curriculum of the state of Florida is masquerading as education if they do not have African-American history in it. And if they do not teach it properly, and if they do not teach it correctly, then what it is is not merely a distortion. It is a damnable con uh, deconstruction of history and life and culture in this country. And that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to destroy the ground, the foundation that we have built for the last 150 years. But they will not be able to do it. I, I guarantee you that will not happen. Uh, the Department uh, of Education says that the inclusion of readings by many major African-American scholars, activists, and writers who explored subjects like black queer studies, black feminist literary thought, the reparations movement and intersectionality, that these cannot be included in African-American studies and African-American history. Now, beware of someone who does not know it's, it's his own history, giving you instructions. And, and, and that's why I, I have it up here. You may not be able to read it. 11, let me tell you this. 11 Italians were lynched in New Orleans 30 years before DeSantis' family got here in 1907, 1891. Italians were not considered white at that time. To be white, they had to become anti-African, anti-black, anti their own origin in Africa. 11, this is the second largest lynching in the history of the United States. The largest lynching in the history of the United States was actually the, um, the uh, lynching of the Dakota peoples, people in Minnesota. Yeah, there were 30, 38, 38 Dakota Native Americans, indigenous people, were at one time were lynched. The second largest group is the Italians. Now, overall, most lynchings were black people. Thousands of black people, five or 6,000 black people lynched, you see? 
But the largest group at one time was the 38 Native Americans and the 11 Italians lynched in New Orleans. So when did they become white? And how did they become white? Anti-blackness. So DeSantis is governor of Florida. He's an Italian. They came here, what, as immigrants? In 1907, that's not too long ago. They, they came here as immigrants just like the immigrants are coming from Mexico and Haiti and Guatemala and Honduras. That's how his people got here. They didn't drop out of the sky. They came here because Italy was suffering. The people were poor. Economic depression. People starving to death. They decided they would look for a better place, and they decided to come to America. And when they got to America, they discovered that America had Africans. And then they had to figure out how do you deal with a country with so many Africans? And then you have to, well, you got to make a choice. You're going to either be for justice and correctness, or you're going to be for injustice. You're going to be for right, or you're going to be for wrong. You've got to make a decision. But this country always had a foundation that was, that was wrong. Because when Andrew Jackson was uh, a general in the American Army under President Monroe, in 1805 through 1816, there was, there was this battle that's going on with the Muscogee people in southern Georgia and Alabama. The whites call these people Creek Indians. You've heard that name, the Creeks. Some people didn't call themselves Creeks. No, there was a lot of water around. There were a lot of swamps and lakes and rivers. And the white people said, we're going to call you Creek Indians because y'all live in those creeks and so on. No, they call themselves Muscogee. And these Muscogee people, they uh, fought for their land. And they were forced to move into Florida. And when they moved into Florida, they were accompanied by Africans who had escaped from bondage. And those Africans and, and, and Native Americans were renamed Seminoles. They still exist. They still exist in Florida. These Seminoles went into Florida and they kept fighting. In November of 1817, General Gaines, You've heard of the city of Gainesville, Florida, named after him. He sent 250 uh, white men from Fort Scott in Georgia to arrest the, the, the king, Neil Mothla, and gunfire was exchanged, and they started the first Seminole Indian War. And, and the thing about the, uh, uh, the Muscogee, who, who became Seminole, was they became Seminole in this interaction between the Native Americans and the, and the, and, 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 and the Africans. That became the, the, the base of the Seminoles. Before they were Muscogee, then they became, um, uh, um, they became Seminoles. Now, there is a, there's another thing that you should know, because part of this is about African American history, and African American history is intertwined with Native American history. Uh, the, the great uh, uh, story about this country, and I've said it often, two big problems. One was the genocide of the native peoples, and the other one was the enslavement of the Africans. And the third part of that story uh, would be the interaction between the Native Americans and the Africans, because uh, what happened was that the Muscogee people, uh, they painted uh, their war clubs red, and those red war clubs uh, made the white people call them the people of the, of the red sticks. What do you think the word Baton Rouge mean? Baton Rouge in Louisiana is named for the Muscogee red sticks because they saw these Africans fight, I mean, these, uh, these uh, uh, Native Americans fighting with these uh, red clubs. And so the name Baton Rouge is just the, the memory 
of the 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 significance of these red clubs in this history. So the first Seminole War, this was a a big war. But then there was a second war that happened. And the second war that happened was led by one of the greatest generals who ever lived in, in America. But he's Native American. His name was Osceola. And there's lot those names have lost you, you don't know them. And they don't and, and DeSantis didn't want you to study them. You that's why you don't study. I just spoke um, uh, not long ago at the University of Texas in El Paso, in a place where uh, the, the Mansas and the Sumas people lived. And their great uh, prophets, all of them disappeared. I mean, disappeared from history, erasure. The whole idea of white racial supremacy is to erase other people, to get you out of history, make you invisible. You don't exist. You, you can't uh, erase people from history. They, they will be there. And in this case with Osceola, Osceola was a leader who organized the people against relocation because what Andrew Jackson uh, tried to do was to uh, put into effect, and they did put into effect for some thousands of people, a relocation moving the Muscogee people and the Seminole people to Oklahoma. And at that time, they thought of Oklahoma as a wild place. We can put them out in Oklahoma, and, and they can deal with the tornadoes and everything out in Oklahoma. But the problem was they discovered oil in Oklahoma. And after they put the Native Americans out there, then they went out there and said, we're going to take this land back from you. It's not, you can't just have this land. They used, they used to call it Indian territory because they're taking all the Native people from east of the Mississippi River and put them in Oklahoma. Everybody, all Native Americans, you go to Oklahoma. And then they, they, they got out there and they found oil. And they said, oh, no, we, we, we white people have to go and take Oklahoma back. We, we made a mistake in that, you see? So this remover of this, uh, of them, so, uh, uh, was a big problem. And, and this is a, a painting of Ose Osceola, Muscogee Seminole leader, who, all, who accepted the escaped Africans who were coming from Georgia and Alabama into his ranks to become part of the Seminole nation. And they fought, they were never, and a very interesting thing about uh, these Sem Seminole uh, people, they never, they never were conquered. They were never totally conquered. In fact, the, the, the big beautiful thing about them is that they escaped and when the whites settled, uh, they moved on into the Everglades. And they still live in the swamps, many of them, in, in Florida. If you go down there, you can hear about them. Now, let me tell you what Lesson 6 is. The college board uh, attempted to give students information about African Americans from multiple perspectives because we are a diverse people. The, the, the quintessential American people and the most diverse set of Africans anywhere is the African American population. We, we have Africans from everywhere. We are all, we, we have many, many different Africans. We are Yoruba, we are Akan, we are Muslim, we are Christian, we are Jews, we are atheists, we are cis and trans, we are Caribbean and continental, we are poets, we are historians, we are philosophers, we are activists, we are artists, we are dancers, sci scientists, politicians, but we're all African Americans. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Our universe is complex. You can't just say we 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 we're not going to teach Langston Hughes, but we'll and uh, we're not going to teach it. And and they don't want to teach Amiri Baraka, one of the greatest poets who ever lived in America is Amiri Baraka, one of the smartest people. We we have to honor Zora Neale Hurston and Sonia Sanchez. We have to honor James Vanderzee and Kenny Gamble and John Coltrane, and Billie Holiday, and Charles Fuller, and Rihanna, and Alain Locke, and Bayard Rustin, and James Baldwin, and A. Philip Randolph are all fixtures in our history. Does DeSantis know that Africans taught the world mathematics? Does he know that they, we, we taught the world geometry? There was no geometry before Africans. 
Did it all we taught him architecture? Did, I guarantee you that he does not know, and he believes that that it is a lie when you tell him, because he's ignorant of history, and the ignorance uh, makes him give very stupid answers to questions of seriousness because he doesn't know. And he's never been taught African-American history. I don't even know whether he's been taught American history. People said he went to college, but I don't know. It's no evidence to me. I don't see any evidence of it. Uh, one journalist said, just talking about this course, that the first unit is called Origins of the African Diaspora. And it offers a bright tapestry of subjects around African culture, history, linguistics, art, economics, as well as the process behind an experience of enslavement, including the role of, of black Africans in that tragedy. It would require a feat of political gymnastics to find issue with units on exploring Africa's geographic diversity, ethno-linguistic diversity, and Bantu dispersals or visualizing early Africa. Well, I, this is, I told you I had some problems with it. I have problems with that. But Henry Louis Gates approved it. He's the consultant, and I've had problems with him, with his argument for years. This is a wrong argument. You listen to what they, this is what they wrote. It says, look at this. You listen to it carefully here. As well as the process behind an experience of enslavement, including the role of black Africans in that tragedy. What are you talking about? We were victims. How are you going to blame the victim? What, 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 what are you? What's your, what's your, wait a minute. Why would you even put that in there? You don't say including the role of English people, including the role of Portuguese in that tragedy. You, you wouldn't say including the role of the Spaniards in that tragedy. No. Slavery was not initiated by African people. It was initiated by Arabs and by Europeans. Don't let anybody anywhere try to convince you that any African people use slavery as its principal mode of production. It does not exist. You can't give me one example. So don't talk, don't, don't let people do that. Now, if you ask me another question, were there Africans who collaborated with the Arabs and the Europeans? I would say yes. You have collaborators. You always have collaborators. You got collaborators in America. You got, you got collaborate. People will collaborate for all different personal reasons. But the initiators of the enslavement of African people were not African people. The, the, I mean, did, did African people know about taking people to America and, 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 and having us to clear the forest? I mean, did, did, did I, no. Were, were African people engaged in wars in which they supported the Europeans or the Arabs? Yes. But don't let the burden be placed on African people. You can't do that. If the, the only example that where there may have been some problematic issue would be the kingdom of Dahomey. And that problem in Dahomey was a Portuguese problem. And the Portuguese in that situation guided and directed and created factions between people for war. But outside of that, you don't have any problem like that. You can't give me these examples, you see? So that I had a problem when that course had that in it. I said, I mean, if I were looking at it, I would have taken it out. But the college board, uh, as I said, used people who uh, also have uh, n not taken an Afrocentric orientation mm -hmm. to this knowledge. I mean, I could go through other aspects of that, but I, w I don't have time. The second unit said freedom, slavery, and resistance. And this guy, the journalist said, this is also standard. 
They had topics like African explorers in the Americas. That's good. Origins and overview of the transatlantic slave trade, fleeing enslavement, and black women's rights and education. Well, I got a problem with transatlantic slave trade. I don't call it transatlantic slave trade. The ocean never did anything to us. It was a European slave trade. If you talk, speak directly and correctly, the Arab slave trade was not the Sahara slave trade. They crossed the Sahara, but it was the Arab slave trade. The Sahara never did anything to us. The ocean never did anything to us. Don't make, give me euphemisms. This was a transatlantic slave trade. No, this was a European slave trade. And when you say it like that, you are telling the truth. People can understand that. It's direct. It's clear in their minds. So I have a problem with that. So this is all, these are problems I have with what the, uh, the course, when it, it was developed, had. But these are different uh, uh, problems than what DeSantis had. The college board caved in to the politicians. When money is involved with the college board, the, uh, the question is, will they do what's right? African American studies reveals the extent of the interaction of social, political, and economic hierarchies. People are always trying to do the hierarchical thing mm -hmm. and to please people for money. DeSantis does not know, and I told you this earlier, he does not know Italian history because if he did, he would know about the 11 Italians lynched by wasps in New Orleans in 1891, second largest mass lynching after the 1850. 62 lynching of 38 Dakota people in Minnesota. That's the history of Italian in America. So don't tell me, I mean, an Italian should know that. I mean, do you not want uh, Italian history to be told? Or what, what are you trying to do? Are you trying to say that Italian history is only white history? White European history? Wasp history? It's a different history. The essential skills that they talked about in this framework that the black studies scholars came up with. They wanted to apply disciplinary knowledge. They wanted to have written source analysis, data analysis, visual analytics, and argumentation. They wanted students to learn those things. I think these are all critical and wonderful skills. There's no problem there. But Ron, Ron DeSantis gets an F on all of these. We give him a grade over there. He fails disciplinary knowledge. He doesn't know anything, number one. So if you don't know anything, you shouldn't even be speaking. You know, I don't understand why people think that everybody, just because you're a politician and you have an office, like being a governor, that you know everything. You don't. Governors don't know everything. In fact, sometimes they know very little. I mean, even presidents know very little sometimes. I mean, if you take Donald Trump as an example, and certainly Ronald DeSantis has taken him for a long time as an example, you see they know very much. So, so what do you do? You take these people who don't know very much and you follow people who don't know very much. He, he fails to understand his own bigotry by not reading critically. If you don't read critically, you, you go around uh, uh, claiming something to be true that's false. And, and that's what he's done. He fails to understand trends in history. Let me tell you what the trend is. And they try to do that to maintain power. They, that's why you have this gerrymandering going on. Gerrymandering came from a man's name. But the, the idea of this idea of gerrymandering, is what it means is that you try to, uh, 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 to, to uh, divide out and separate out a certain portion of the voting population that will always ensure that you will be in power. And you can do that tactically if you are even a minority. You can, if you are in power in the state legislature, you can draw the voting lines so that uh, the Republicans uh, would be in the majority in most of the districts, even districts where you say you got a lot of African American people, you just divide them up by five, put them in five different districts. Don't put all the African Americans in one district where they'll have power, put them in five different districts and make them minorities in those districts, you see? It's gerrymandering. 
Well, well, but the trend is this. The trend is that the African-American and Latino populations are the fastest growing populations in America. So you got you you ain't you're not gonna be you're not gonna win. It's just like it's just like um, uh, there's this uh, uh, situation that happened in Arizona, where uh, 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 one of the senators uh, was um, uh, decided that uh, she was she said she was a Democrat, but then she decided that she was gonna be an independent. And she's going to um, run as an independent and not uh, be a Democrat. You you remember her, right? So she she decided that. But then what what we learned out, what we discovered the other day was that the growth of the African American population in Arizona, because of people coming from California and other places into Arizona, is uh, is mushrooming. So. She's going to have a hard time not being a Democrat if she's going to run as an independent against a Mexican-American congressman who is running for her Senate seat. That's, that's the policy. That's, those are the trends. The trends, you got to understand them. Also, DeSantis misunderstands the future of the country. He wants to forget the past. You can't forget the past. The past allows you to know what how to deal with the future. He makes no credible, credible arguments because they are founded on bigotry. I, I, I think that he, his recommend, my recommendation is that he needs remedial work. Let me give you some quick points and I'll be finished. Here's what he needs to do. He needs some African American history. He needs to know that Africa is the home of humanity, that Africa is the cradle of human civilization, that that Africans uh, built the greatest monument in antiquity, mm -hmm. that John Baptiste Pont du Sable founded Chicago, that Biddy Mason was one of the founders of Los Angeles, that African Americans are derived from great kingdoms, empires, and nations, that Benjamin Banneker yes, laid the plans for Washington, D.C., when the Frenchman Lafont was unable because of sickness to finish the job. And we need to know that black hands built the Capitol building and the White House building in Washington, D.C. We, we built those with our own hands. We, we are the people who did that. So, and then I can give you thousands hundreds of thousands of more data and information about what African people have done. Uh, and that's, that, I mean, I give you that and I give that message to you uh, and I ask whether or not there are any questions that I can take. All right. Okay, there's a question there. Thank you very much. Yeah, Dr. Sant, did you really think that knowledge for this for descent? Do you think knowledge of African and African American history would change his mind and his spirit? Well, uh, I, I, I'm an optimist, <laughs> but <laughs> but but sometimes sometimes. Sometimes you have sometimes you have great challenges, you know, and I think that that's one of the greatest challenges. Uh, I, I think that there are people who are so convinced that they are right that they don't want to have any information entered that will change their minds. And I think that Ronald DeSantis, from what I can see, is a very slow person in terms of his understanding, and it would be very difficult to change his mind. But I think, given a good teacher. I mean, if I sat down with him for about a couple of hours, I could perhaps convince him. Uh, <laughs> I think I could convince him that some of the stuff that he's saying is, is uh, you know, is, is, is not correct. I mean, now you, you, you have to have some faith in teaching, and I have some faith in teaching. But, but it's a good question. Uh, bigotry and bias is almost endemic in this society. 
it is a problem, and it is a deep problem. Uh, it is uh, perhaps the, the major contradiction in the American society is this notion of white racial, the doctrine of white racial supremacy. And it's an illusion, it's imaginary, it's, uh, it's, a, f it's a fiction, and, uh, and we are fighting against it every day, and we will continue to fight against it, and we will teach uh, our children and their children African-American history. Yes, Dr. Sante, uh, jealousy too is a, is a d dangerous thing. Yes, it is. <clears throat> uh, you talked about the um, fascism uh, in the Roman Senate on the left and the right of the center. They had the symbols. They had the symbols of fascism on the left and the right side. Those were sticks tied together and the axe in the center. Mm -hmm. In Washington, D.C., in the Senate, when they meet, when the president talk and the both houses meet, mm -hmm. on the left and the right, they pull back uh, something like the size mm -hmm. of that door, and they show display of the fascism symbols mm -hmm. on the left and the right mm -hmm. in that chamber. Mm -hmm. uh, it's like, put it in your face and mm -hmm. you don't know what it is. Absolutely. Well, there, there are many symbols in this country that... Uh, exist and we don't know what they are and they come from secret societies and various other uh, uh, groups and units and um, and we, we I, I don't even know for example whether or not somebody like a Ronald DeSantis would even know uh, a fascist sign when he sees it but he knows how to uh, project a fascist ideologies and ideas ideas of trying to uh, keep people from reading certain documents or learning certain information. That, that's the fascist uh, attitude. And they may have all kinds of symbols. He may have even created one himself. But the point of the matter is that uh, uh, it, it does not and it cannot, rather it cannot exist here. I mean, we, we, we fought against it and we have to fight against it and continue to fight against it uh, in every society, in every circle. And just one interesting point, that symbol is also on the back of the dime, yes. the U.S. dime. Thank you. Yes. Dr. Sante, I just want to thank you for that excellent uh, presentation. I'm from North Philly, so I'm going to talk plain. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'd say that it, it, white folks, this white supremacy doesn't want to teach you math because if you don't know math, you don't know how to count your change if you buy something. <laughs> Same thing, they don't want to teach you history. We won't know that they, if we know our history and know who we are, this whole thing would change. Yeah. So thank you so much, sir. Thank you and, very oh, much. Oh, take this young fella here. He should be in ready or something. He was off speaker this morning, turn the church upside down. God yeah. bless you. <laughs> now, that, that, that young man is one of the most brilliant young people I know. He's yeah. a brilliant man. I see. Yeah. Yeah. Again, Doc, thank you. I just wanted to, this is an important point about fascism, uh, in particular in our society, mm -hmm. contemporary times right now. Yes. You have to remember... Hitler didn't put a gun in anybody's head. Absolutely. He rose to power by Absolutely. democracy. Absolutely. He was voted yes. into the Reichstag, yes. and in the Reichstag, he be, went on to become the leader. So Absolutely. Be careful. Read Absolutely. your history. That's yeah. just as important as understanding black history. Uh, Thank uh, you. Uh, 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 Brother Strada, that is absolutely right. And I, I try to remind people of that because, uh, uh, you know, people sometimes think, well, Hitler became a dictator, but uh, he, he, he was elected. Uh, just like we, I mean, in this country, they elected Trump. I mean, you, you, how in the hell could we get somebody to elect Trump? Well, democracy sometimes uh, produces strange uh, animals. And in this case, it, it could be possible. And that's why you get a DeSantis in Florida. How, how, how can DeSantis, as ignorant as he is, as dumb as he is, how can that man be elected to be a governor of a state? We, we ask that. Black people ask that because we know people who are smarter than he is. And we ask, how does that, how does that happen? Right. It happens where you have a notion of white racial supremacy. And white people have come out and will come out as they are in the case of Trump. They will come out, those 30% that he can get, those are 30% of the people who believe this country should be for whites only. 
and and that's their doctrine that's their philosophy that's their life they they live for that and they don't even care about the fact that they're living on the land of native peoples whose ancestors are buried on this land that they're building buildings on and claiming land uh, disputes and fighting over uh, this is this is a it's a it's a crazy situation going on you see yes um, good afternoon and thank you once again good for afternoon that. It was very good uh, I, I want to talk about the Italians um, I read this book a couple of years ago and I was looking at newspaper clippings and I just want to know if it's true or not right uh, when they said that like early in the last century when the Italians were coming over here as immigrants a lot of the ones down south settled among the blacks, especially the dark Italians, mm -hmm. where they felt most comfortable with them, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, I read about the lynchings, and I also read that the uh, Italian government al also almost went to war with the United States over mm -hmm. the, the lynchings. The lynchings, yeah. Is, is, that, is that true? Do you know? That's what I understand, and yeah. that's what I understand from my, my own under, my knowledge. The, the, uh, the Italians were uh, given jobs and positions in uh, the big cities and, and cities like New Orleans at the time, that the same jobs and same positions that blacks uh, had, and uh, they were working in the same situation. But I think that after the murders, after the lynchings of, of uh, the Italians, that the Italian community decided that well, one thing that they had to figure out is how do you move from a position of being looked down upon as inferior to a position of being with the people who were considered superior, you see? And that's that's the movement in America. All right? So, okay. One question from the internet. All right. Like yes. Uh, Dante, you Acosta, uh, you Acosta asked, did 46, I guess he's talking about the president, make any comments on Dia Santos? And what about the education cabinet? Well, the, 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 the 46, the, the the Trump, the Trump, <laughs> the 46, the 46 make any statement about DeSantis. Uh, I understand he did, but I don't remember exactly what he said. But whatever he said, uh, it's probably um, uh, self-serving, and it was probably not something that would uh, would uh, you know benefit uh, anybody except he he would try to show that he was a little uh, less uh, um, provincial and a little less narrow-minded than DeSantis. But uh, if you ask me. Uh, Trump's policies have also been uh, very much based on white racial domination. So I, I think they're, they're two in the same hat. And, uh, and I think that you, put, you could put Nikki Haley in there as well. They're all in the same boat. Uh, Pop, uh, Mike Pompey, they're all in the same boat. There, there's not one of them who's come out in an express, strong way speaking about uh, the dream that uh, African Americans have fought, lived for, died for in this nation uh, for uh, uh, over a hundred years, we have we have we have been the ones to push this country toward a more liberal, a more just, a more equal uh, ide uh, ideal of what a society should be, and we will continue to do that, and we will never give up our history and culture. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We, okay, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate all of you, and thanks, uh, everybody. Thank you. And, and by all means, remember, uh, the next uh, lecture is Dr. Joyce K.